Right, we're back with the Super Galaxy Frame Respray. Day three, or is it day four? I'm not sure, I've lost count. I've been at it all this week and luckily we've had hot weather. I've just mounted the frame on the top of the Black & Decker work, mate. Uh, all I'm gonna do now is it's, it's had overnight to dry. We've had some warm weather and it's nicely dry now, even though it's less than 24 hours. I'm just gonna go over it with some, some 600 grade wet and dry. Just, just to smooth it down a little bit. I mean, it's not too bad at all, actually. It was quite, in most places, it is quite smooth. But there are a few nibs, as you call it, just little bits of roughness on it. And if you do this and just rub it down gently, it will result in a better finish overall when I put the next coat on. It's not too bad, actually. And it's only worth doing it on the places that show. You don't need to bother around the awkward parts like this because nobody's going to notice that. Only the main frame members. Uh, I'm just going to do that and then when you've done that make sure that you wash it off with some uh, damp cloth a clean damp cloth to get rid of any dust or anything before you spray otherwise you won't get such a good finish but um, I just thought I'd show myself doing a little bit of work because so far all I've done is explain things and you probably think oh he's got somebody else doing all the work well I've actually done it myself but it's a bit boring so I'll end that bit there and uh, next I'm going to show you how I plan to spray it Right, this is my spraying, cycle spraying stand. And yes, I know it's a Black & Decker work, mate. But I'm not just going to use a Black & Decker work, mate. The problem I've got is being able to spray the underside of the bike and the top side of the bike without touching it. So what I've done, I've come up with this idea. It's a bit of a bodge. I don't know how it's going to work yet because I haven't actually tried it uh, with spraying. All it is is a, a piece of timber. Any old pit, it's actually part of a bed, I think. Some old bed somebody chucked out and I salvaged it. Because you do. It's about four foot long, but that doesn't matter. And I've got a piece of beech wood here, which is a part of an old um, salt and pepper mill. It came from a factory where they made them and they had a lot of rejects and they were getting them rid of for firewood. So I've used that. I've cut the end off. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mount it in the work, mate. I'll show you there some. Now, what I've worked out is if I put this in here and tighten the work, mate, up, there we go. I can then take the frame. I'll move the camera up ready so you can see there's the thing. I'll get the frame now. I can now pop the frame onto the dowling like this. Right now, obviously, that's going to be that's too high up for spraying, and I can't do the top front like that. But if I lower that, lower that down like that, look. Right now. I don't know, I'll have to move the camera so you can see it. Now you can see there's the top of the work, mate, so it's just above it. Now that is perfect position for spraying the underside of the frame. And I can actually, by holding the parts that I don't need to spray, I can move it like up and down so I can get a, a, a proper um, spray thing. Now to do the top part, which I'm going to do first, all you've got to do is turn this around. And I'm going to do that now, but I'm going to turn the camera off for a second now mounted on the workmate uh, and it's the, the back end is leaning on the end of the workmate there so I can now gain access to the down tube here and, and this tube here and underneath the top tube along here and, and quite a lot of it and then when I'm ready to do the other part I've got this stick with a nail in the top uh, I worked out <laughs> this is the only way I could think of doing it there's a stick with a nail in it, and I'm going to poke that into the head tube up here. There we are. The nail stops it going in too far. Then I'm going to lower the frame down onto the stick, so that the stick hits the ground like that. And now you can see the frame is in the other position, where I can now gain access to underneath the frame and the bits that I couldn't reach before in the other position. So I'm hoping that works. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the spray can, and do a little bit of spraying just to show the principle of it. I'm not going to do much because I'm not very good at it and I don't want you all laughing at me. But apart from that, it'll be a bit boring. So I'll just do a little bit. I'm also a bit worried, of course, about the spray getting blown onto the camera lens. So I, that's one reason why I'm not going to do too much of the spraying. This is a spray I'm using. It's only cheap stuff. Poundland. I expect it's all the same anyway. When I say cheap stuff, it seems to work. I've used it in the past. It's... Uh, a pounder can, this one's from Poundland, you can buy it in several places. B&M stores used to sell one, although I don't know whether they still do or not. This is the black one, and I'm just going to give it a go. 
give it a good shake first. There's some ball there, two nice and actually glass bearings in there, like well, marbles in actual fact. And all you gotta do then is just point it in spray. See it's going over towards the camera, that's what I'm worried about. Just light bits, don't do too much, as it will run. I'm just doing underneath, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm down on the bottom bracket bit now. The main thing is not to do it too thick. You can put several coats on, lots of thin coats are far superior to one thick coat. Thick coat will run. If it doesn't look as it's covered completely, don't worry about it too much. I'm going around the other side now to do a little bit here. Make sure I can see what I'm doing. That's quite good this stand I made. Simple, does the job. I'm going to switch the camera off now because you don't want to watch me do all this. It's a bit boring anyway. And I'm a bit worried about the spray coming onto the camera lens. But I'll show you when I finish the main part. Well there we are. One coat of shiny black spray paint. There we go. Not looking too bad actually. And it's soon going to dry out in the hot sun. Anyway, I'm going to leave that now for a couple of hours. Um, well, that's it. I've put about three coats on now. The sun's about to go down. Well, it's still light. It's about 8 o'clock in the evening, but the sun's gone in now and it's getting a bit chilly. Uh, I did put one more coat on it about an hour ago. Uh, as you can see, it's not looking too bad at all. I'm quite pleased with it, actually. Better than I thought it'd turn out. Um, I've done quite a bit of work on it. Uh, what I should do now, I should put it inside overnight, and then uh, tomorrow I'll give it another couple of coats, give it overnight to dry off. The more the better as far as I can see. But it looks pretty good actually, I'm quite pleased with it. I probably think that whilst I've been waiting for the paint to dry, I've been sat about in the garden drinking cups of tea. Well, I haven't been idle actually. What I've been doing is I've been cleaning the components up. This is the chain set. I've taken it all apart, taken all the rings off wash them in paraffin and clean them and I've polished up the the crank here um, these components, I've taken these apart and cleaned them up that's the front derailleur, pedals I've sprayed the little ends of the pedals as well I've got to refit those, I'll give them another coat tomorrow but uh, that's the thing about spraying, whilst the paint's drying you can be doing other things so I've got the wheels to do and things like that but hopefully by the time the paint's finished I shall have all the components cleaned up and ready to go back on board Anyway, that'll do for now, I think. I'm going to pack up for the day. Bye.